hello and welcome to today's tutorial so today's tutorial will be a first part of a three part series so the first part is on how to cut a palazzo pant and the second part is on how to sew a palazzo pant and the third part is on how to make a kimono top just like the one in the thumbnail so please watch to the end of this video thank you so displayed on the screen are the measurements that I will use in making this pants. I have the circumference measurements and the vertical measurements. Now the circumference measurements are the measurements around the body. So I have the waist measurements, circumference, the hip circumference measurement, the thigh, the knee and the ankle. While the waist and the hip measurements are divided by 4, the thigh, the knee and the ankle measurements are divided by 2. So for the vertical measurement, I have the crotch depth, the knee length, and the ankle length. The ankle length is the length from the waist to the ankle or where you want the pants to stop. So for me, I want the pant to be on floor length. So that's why my ankle length is um, 44 inches. I folded my fabric into two using half of my thigh measurement. The thigh measurement divided by 2 is bigger than the hip measurement divided by 4. So that's why I folded my fabric using the, the half of the thigh measurement. So I've also folded according to the length of the trouser, which is the ankle length. So now I would measure from my start line, the line I ruled, I would remove 1.5 inches for my band. And from that 1.5 inches, I'll place my tape on the start line on 1.5 inches and then measure out my crotch depth. So displayed is on how you would measure your crotch depth and that is how you can measure your crop depth crotch depth you sit on a hard surface and measure from your waist to the surface of the seat you're sitting on or you can divide your hip measurement by four and add one inches to that to get your crotch depth so the next length will now be to measure out the knee length so i would also place my tape on the start line from one and a half inches and measure to 25 inches which is my knee length I'll also measure from the start line, placing the tape as well on 1.5 inches on the start line and I'll measure to 44 inches, which is the length of the pants or the ankle length. And then I'll add extra one and a half inches to it for hemming the lower parts of the pants. So now on the crotch line, I will measure half of my thigh measurement, which is what this fabric has been folded with. That's 12 Point five. On the same line, I would impute quarter of my hip measurement, which is 10.75. So on the waistline, I would also note this 10.75, which is the quarter of the hip measurement. But then from there, from that quarter of the hip measurement, since I do not want the front to be bulky, I will come in by half an inch and then connect the line on the waistline and the line on the crotch line together. I'll draw a line connecting the two together. Now I will draw out my crotch for the front. So I will come up on the vertical line. I will come up by two inches and make a curve from the vertical line to the horizontal line of the crotch line. Of the crotch line, I would make a curve, and this would be my crotch line for the front. The crotch for the front. So next, I would impute quarter of my waist measurement starting from the line, from the straight line I've joined from the crotch to the waist. I would measure from that line, I would measure 8 inches, which is quarter of my waist measurement on the waist line. And then from the crotch line, I would come up by 2 inches on the side and then connect the waist measurement to this line I came up by. So I'm connecting from the two inches I came up by to the waist measurement on the waist line. Then next now I'm going to measure what I have on my crotch line. That's the whole fabric. What I have, I have 12 and a half. I would find the middle of that. I'll divide that by two and then place that whatever I have. I'll place that to find the center of the knee line on the knee line. I'll place what I have and find the center on the knee line and as well as on the ankle line. I'm sorry that the ankle is out of focus, but that's what I did. What I placed on the knee line, I also placed on the ankle line. 
So the essence of doing this is to make sure that the measurement remains centralized and equal on both sides. So now I would impute half of my knee measurement on the knee line. So half of my knee measurement is 9. 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. So on this line, the center line, I'll place 4.5 on both sides of the line. That's what I did. 4.5 to make it on both sides of the line to make it 9 inches. Then on the ankle line, half of my ankle measurement is 7. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. So on the center line, the point I noted on the center, I will take 3.5 on both sides of the line to make it 7 inches. That is, I'm centralizing the measurement so that they will be equal on both sides. Then since I'm making a palazzo pants, I will be adding some allowances is on the uh, for the knee circumference so for my knee circumference depending on what you want you can add one inch you can add three quarter inch or one and a half but i will be adding three quarter inch 0 0.75 on both sides just the way i took the initial measurement so i added extra one and a half inches to the knee circumference the front part that's th three quarter inch on both sides so on my ankle line I would also be adding ease to it. I'll be adding extra inches. So it also depends on what you want to add. So for the ankle, I'll be adding one and a half inches from the initial measurements I've made. I'll add extra one and a half inch inches on both sides. So on the right, I'll add one and a half inches. And on the left side, I'll also add one and a half inches, making it extra three inches I added to the front parts of the palazzo pants on the ankle side for the ankle circumference sorry now that i've imputed my measurements next thing will be to shape my pants so using my pant curve i am connecting from the crotch line to the knee line as you see me do the way i placed my pant curve and i connected then on the other side as well i'll connect from the crotch line to the hip line the measurements i have from the crotch line sorry to the knee line i would connect as well i'm using the pants curve for this part and then from the knee line to the ankle line i would use a straight ruler i'll use a straight ruler to connect down from the knee line to the ankle i'll use a straight ruler to connect the measurements there so after connecting i would also draw connect from the ankle line to the hem line that's the extra one and a half inches i have for hemming i'll also connect that so that everything will be connected before i cut out the pants so i'm also connecting up to the hem line so since there will be a band attached to this pant, I will also take half inch from the waist. I will take half inches, half inch for joining the band to the pant. So I'm taking the half inch and connecting it as you see me do. Then for the front, for the front part of the pants, the crotch length in front is usually shorter than the crotch length at the back. So from the crotch line, I would come down by one inch and then I would have to connect it to the side seam. But I will not cut that out now. I will do that after I have cut out this pant and used it to cut out the back part. After that, I will be cutting, reducing the um, crotch length in front. So I'm going ahead and cutting out my pants. Now, as you're watching, please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please take out time and click on the subscribe button. And please give this video a thumbs up. And also remember to click on the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. So after cutting out, I will fold the fabric for the back into two as well and make sure that the width of the fabric is 5 inches larger than what I have on the front. And also on top, I have extra 2 inches, at least 2 inches on top. So what I will do now will be to measure the crotch for the back. 
So I would take my hip measurement as you see me do and I'll find the middle, middle of that and then I'll note the middle on the fabric for the front part of the pants. I would note the center and from that center I would now retake quarter of my hip measurement again. I'll measure 10.75 again and note that. I will measure another 10.75 inches and note that and that will be the crotch for the back part of the pants. So I would extend the line. I would extend the line from the line running from the front. I will extend to that point where I have my 10.75 inches where it stopped on the back fabric. So that will be the crotch. So now I would now take for the allowance I left up, I would take the butt rise because there is a butt at the back so to prevent the the pants opening when one is sitting down so that's why we are taking it so i'll take a height of 1.5 inches for my butt rise and i'll also take i'll also take my dart allowance of one inch for the back there is no dart in front i did not take any dart allowance in front so i'm taking a dart allowance of one inches for the back so i'm connecting from the one and a half inches i went up by for the butt rise to the point on the start line where i also took one inches for the dart and then from there i'll use my pants curve to connect it back to the crotch line to the crotch line so i'm connecting the points as you see me do so next now will be to take my dart, my allowance, sewing allowances. So on the front part, I did not take any allowance. So now I'll take the allowance for joining the fabrics together. So I'll be taking two inches allowance for joining them together. So I'll measure on the waistline, I'll take two inches allowance. So I would also extend my butt rise to that two inches. So I will now take two inches all along from the waistline down to the crotch line. I'll keep on taking two inches. I'll take two inches. And then I would use my curve also. I'll use my armhole curve to make a curve to curve for the crotch. And then I'll also use my straight ruler to join the point I've made. Then also on the knee line as well as on the ankle line, what I added when I was cutting out those parts was just the ease allowance for the palazzo. So now I will take the seam allowance, 2 inches seam allowance on the knee line and also 2 inches seam allowance on the ankle line. So I will then connect from the crotch line the same allowance from the crotch line to the knee line using my pant curve and then connect from the knee line to the ankle line using a straight ruler. So after connecting these points, I would check my measurements again. I'll recheck my measurements to make sure that it is correct and complete. Then I'll go ahead and cut out the back part of the palazzo pants. And please take note that for the butt rise for the, at the back, it all depends on the size of a person. If the person is bigger or has a big uh, butt, you can take up to 2 inches to 3 inches. And if the person is smaller, you can take 1 inch or 1.5 inches. So after cutting out the back part, I will then go ahead and reduce the crotch length of the front. As I said before, I would come down by 1 inch from the crotch length crotch side and then connect it to the side part as you see me do and then i'll cut that out i'll cut out to reduce the crotch length in front to avoid it being bulky or bulgy in front then i will also mark out the dart because i took that allowance at the back so i would be measuring out where i would place my dart so before i measure out the dart i have cut out some strip for the zip flap the zip fly i have two strips one unfold and one just single like that and the length is about eight inches and i've also cut out a long strip unfold i have about 2.25 inches for the band and the length is up more than 37 inches so i'll iron stay on these um fabrics i've cut out then so for the 
that at the back where i'll place the dart i'll measure out that is half of my thigh measurement which is 12.5 just the way i divided it into two and placed on the knee line and on the ankle line i'll also find that measurement and place it up for the dart i'll just trace it up on the back pattern and that will be where my dart will be and for the length of the dart i would measure i'll take um um about 5.5 inches for the length of my dart i'll take 5.5 inches as the length of my dart so i would draw a line 5.5 inches that is where my dart will be so i'll make this point and i'll connect it to the point i have on top and then i'll take half inches on both sides of this line and that will be that for my dart for the back i'll also notch it so that i would have the mark on the other side and that is it on how to cut a palazzo pants and this is the first part of the three part series so see you in the next video where we'll sew this pant thank you